Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Next up, we have NYU Shanghai with, you can share for your school if you want, with Adaptool helping amputees use tools directly without a prosthetic hand as an intermediary step. Are you guys set up? Hello, we're the NYU Shanghai team, uh, and this is our product, Adaptool. Uh, I'm Cadella Burroughs from Washington, D.C. in the United States. My name is, my name is Selena, and I'm from Tuimazi, Russia. My, my name is Fred Wu. I'm from Shanghai, China. My name is Watcher. I'm from Beijing, China. So this is our project, Adaptool. And that tool helps amputees to use tools directly without using a prosthetic hand as an intermediate step. So our school is located in China, and in China, the total population of amputees is even bigger than the total population of Netherlands. And the biggest, <laughs> yes, Netherlands, hi. <laughs> And the biggest problem those amputees are facing is 73% unemployment rate. Because, because most of the jobs and careers rely heavily on holding the tools. So we had the chance to interview an amputee who lost both of his arms in the firework accident. His name is Mr. Ku and he works in China Disabled Persons Federation. So Mr. Ku confirmed that such unemployment problem does exist. And he also showed us how he comes up with creative ways on using the tools in his daily life. So in the next two videos, you would see him combing his hair and also drawing. So the way he does it now, he has this wristband and he stacks the hairbrush inside. However, this process takes time and connection is also really loose, so sometimes the hairbrush even falls down. Uh, the way he draws now, he is using both of his arms and his drawings are beautiful. And as Mr. Ku notices that the uh, really one really important thing that both of these tools, the pencil and the hairbrush, lack now is stability. Stability is really important. And as you may notice, Mr. Ku now, he is not using a prosthetic hand. When you lose your arm, the obvious solution would be to get a new one. However, in our research, we found out, we found out that this solution doesn't always work. So Mr. Ku thinks that it's better not to use a hand at all than to have a bad version of it. Unfortunately, most of the prosthetic hands now, they are not really efficient, they are not really reliable, and they are also quite expensive. Uh, because the conventional idea of designing a prosthetic arm hand is designed something that will look like a human hand. How, but in our research, we found out that in our daily life, most of the time we use our hand for holding the tools and using them. So we thought, why just don't we skip the grip? All right. So in our research, we found that there are some people already doing so. So this man actually attached the chainsaw directly to his arm with a ball joint. We love this idea, but we also want to be able to use multiple tools. So we, ha we looked at 
Amy Mullings, who has 12 pairs of prosthetic legs, and we want to use this, uh, uh, this idea of interchangeable legs to design a new prosthetic arm. So here is adapt to combining uh, direct attaching and interchangeability. And it works like this, you just wear it. And so how can this thing, <laughs> yeah, right. So how can this thing help Mr. Cool? So in the interview we saw Mr. Cool walking in his garden trying to operate a spade and he uses two arms and it's super complicated but adapt to will make everything so easy. So with adapt tool, you just put a tool into this tool socket and you click a button and the tool is fastened. And this is how it works. We designed this mechanism. So with adapt tool, like work like this, just one arm is enough for effective operation. With more complex tools and more complex jobs, you need to be able to do more than just hold the uh, object that you're using. In this video, we saw Mr. Ku operating a water hose. And while most people are able to just clench their fists in order to operate it, for Mr. Ku, it became quite a complex affair where he had to use both of his arms. Um, if it, we, uh, where he had to use both of his arms. But uh, you can imagine that if Mr. Ku was trying to use something a little more dangerous, such as a screwdriver or a drill, uh, you wouldn't really want to do such a thing because it could be quite dangerous. Uh, so with the use of ADAPT tool, where we plan on using multiple sensors, uh, specifically myoelectric sensors, um, we're able to give amputees more control than they've ever had before. Myoelectric sensors read the electrical signals that your muscles give off when you contract them. And through ADAPT tool, we plan on allowing them to, plan, uh, to map out specific contractions to um, the actions that the tool is taking. In this video, we see someone who has used a, a pretty basic uh, prototype of myoelectric controller to operate and turn on and turn off a, a drill. Um, and if we apply this idea to Mr. Ku and his garden hose, then you can imagine instead of having to use two arms to operate, he would instead be able to simply clench his fist and aim the water at wherever he needs to water. Okay, just in case that an amputee wants to implement even more complicated tools, he may need configuration. So we decided to add a touch screen onto adapter, but we're not very sure if it is practical for an amputee to use touch screen until we see this video. <laughs> Okay, so here we can see Mr. Ku is using his cell phone with, which has a touch screen. It tells me that uh, an amputee is it's possible for, for, an amputee, for an amputee to use touch screen. So on the touch screen of adapter, uh, sorry, okay, on touch screen you can adjust uh, the settings of a specific tool. For example, in the case of Water hose, you can adjust uh, the water pressure by just moving the button on the touchscreen. And the last thing I want to mention about the adapter is the sleeve. The, so the sleeve is the part where the amputee puts his arm to adapt to. It's very close to a normal prosthetic sleeve, but we want to make it more comfortable. So we use a special material called a memory foam, which uh, can adjust its form to the arm. So something right here between uh, the arm and the, the adapter. So the, the, the amputee won't feel any pressure even he wears adapter for a long time. And we also have supportive bands around the shoulder, so which to make sure that the adapter won't fall out even, even if the tool is heavy. But with all this talk of the technical, we don't want to lose sight of the most important part of our project, the user. So we asked Mr. Ku what he thought about adapt tool. <音><音><音><音><音><音> 
这个东西可以啪弹出来啊，然后你你要放要的东西放进去再啪嗒一个判子把它卡卡住，那更稳稳当了。还有，哎，你能够给我再腾出点手，要好多了。Thank you for your time. Are you Shanghai? Who would like to go first? I see a hand. Not at all. <laughs> um, so that was a really fascinating, really great project, and um, I think. Actually, we all really need a round of applause for Mr. Koo, because what a brilliant kind of research participant. He was so good. Um, you know, I think that was the, one of the like, huge strengths of your, of your project, was that you had this really interesting person, and you went into such detail. Like, you really saw and understood what he was trying to do. And so, you know, that you came out with this kind of output of basically your arm becoming, you know, sort of, more like a drill and a drill bit, and that whole kind of idea of um, kind of you know taking the hand out was was really um, a really great kind of step forward. I really like that. Sort of almost like kind of kept the end reminding me of those multicolor pens you get. You know the green bit pokes out and then the, the changing the colors. I thought that was really really lovely. And the you know also the technical thought through of things like using my electricity and how would I control it and what what you know what are you trying to do so. Um, I thought that was really impressive and, and really interesting and kind of trying to solve a very fascinating problem. Like for one very specific person, but you could see great, you know, the equivalent of Holland was going to be, the Netherlands was going to be doing it. So <laughs> that's great. Well done. All right. So you guys have seen Inspector Gadget. <laughs> um, it's amazing. I mean, this is the kind of thing that you see and you sort of go, this doesn't exist already. I can't believe it doesn't exist already. So um, for you guys to come up with it is, uh, you know, both uh, um, all the criteria you want to look for, right? It's um, it just feels right, and so um, it seems like a, a thing in the world that will make a lot of lives better. Uh, so congrats, that's that's really really um, that's the whole goal, right? <laughs> Great work. Yeah, I uh, I echo both those sentiments. I think Mr. Koo is just the most amazing find, and I think. Um, I love how when you encountered him, you, I, th I don't know the full genesis of the story, but like, I think you went from designing a tool for a single amputee to one that would work for a double amputee, which is, you know, upping, upping the challenge even more for yourself. Um, and again, this is, why doesn't this exist? Is sort of like this um, puzzling question. Um, and uh, it, it's definitely something that needs to exist. It sort of feels, um, you know, empowering in so many different and diverse scenarios uh, for so many people. So um, great job, great concept, really simple concept, super challenging execution. Um, would love to have seen uh, more prototyping, uh, you know, and, um, and something to evaluate for Mr. Koo and get some iteration going in that design. Um, but the concept itself, super strong. So and great, great user research. So well done. Any questions from the audience? You could have sold everybody in the audience one of those. <laughs> it was unbelievable. I was, I, just, I was reaching for my wallet. It was so good. I totally agree. <laughs> no questions? OK, thank you so much, guys. This is great. Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available.